In this video, we will learn how should we, how can we use the backward elimination to choose the best regression model. Before I start to analyze this special case, I want to re do a short review about the definition for backward elimination. The backward elimination procedure begins with a model that includes all the independent variables. It then deletes one independent variable at a time using the same procedure as a stepwise regression. However, the backward elimination procedure does not permit an independent variable to be re-entered once it has been removed. The procedure stops when none of the independent variables in the model have a p-value greater than the, the rejected level 0.05 or 0.01. So in this case, we will look at how can we really perform this whole procedure to get our regression model. So this data set is a study. They pr uh, provide the data on variables that may be related to the number of weeks a manufacturing worker has been jobless. The dependent variable in the study, so it's measured by the weeks, was defined as the number of the weeks a worker has been wor jobless due to a layoff. So people who did this re research they think maybe the worker's age and the number of years of education and the marriage status and the status in the household, the number of years on the previous job, and whether a manager occupation or not, or whether a sale occupation or not, will have a significant impact on the, uh, on the number of weeks a worker has been jobless. So now, on the spreadsheet, you can find the first column, weeks. Actually, it's a Y variable. It is the number of weeks a worker has been jobless. And the column B is our first explanatory variable, the age of a worker. And the column C is the second explanatory variable, is the number of years of education. And the column D is our dummy variable for the marriage data. So if the the column D is one. That means that in the, that indicates the observation is married, and a zero otherwise. And column E is also a dummy variable for the data in the household. If the column E the value is one, means the observation is the head of the household, zero otherwise. And the column F is the number of years on the previous job. And the column G. It's a dumb variable. If you see the value is 1, it means the observation has a management occupation and a 0 otherwise. And the column H is also a dummy variable. And if you see the value is 1, it means the observation is a sales occupation, 0 otherwise. So now we will use this data set to learn how can we perform the backward elimination, find our best model. So we first started with our full model as uh, based on the definition for the backward elimination procedure. So which means we will include all the explanatory variable from column B to H. So now we click the data tab, find the data analysis, then use click the regression. So the first column, column A, is our Y range, Y variable. So we select from A1 to A51. So we totally have 50 observations. And then we select our X range, which include the column B to column H. Then make sure you check the labels because the first row for our data set is the labels for each column. And uh, let's place our model in the new worksheet called the full model. The reason I call it a full model because we didn't, we haven't eliminated any of our explanatory variables. So this is called a full model. So since we only uh, care about which variable should we le left, instead of to analyzing the residual and or to do the diagnostics, so you cannot uncheck those five box for the residuals and the normal probabilities. So we only care about how, which explanatory are significant which explanatory variables are not significant. So now we can click OK. And after you got uh, the regression output, I highly recommend you 
to set the format of your seal. And uh, so make sure you know how many decimal places you want to keep for the result. So normally I choose four. So right click your mouse, find format cells, and choose number, and increase the decimal places to four, and click OK. So now we will look at which explanatory variable is not significant and which is the most not significant. So now we look at the third part of the regression output is related to the regression equation. Then look at the p-value. So here you need to pay attention. For the intercept, we don't care. We don't care if they are if it is significant or not. We only care the partial coefficient corresponding to our no, explanatory variables. So now here is our p-values. So among those p-values, the largest one is this. The largest one is 0 0.5160. So which means the education, the number of years of education have the most non-significant impact on this model. Then what we will do is we will go back to our original data set delete this explanatory variable. So we will copy the original data set and paste it. And after you paste it, make sure you delete. We will delete the education because it's the most non-significant variable, explanatory variable in the regression model. Then we delete the variable. Then we can start to do the data analysis again based on the reduced model. And we will select a new range of our x explanatory variable. And then instead of full model, we call it the model 1 because this is our first reduced model. And uh, set up your sales decimal places. Now we look at the p-value again, and what we found is the marriage data have the highest, uh, uh, so no, the tenure, which is 0 0.4183, this is the highest p-value we have, and also it's larger than 0 0.05, so it's not significant. So which means the tenure this variable doesn't significantly affect our y variable. So what we want to do next is we will delete this data set. We will delete the variable tenure to create a new data set for our explanatory explanatory variables. And the copy and the paste. And we will delete the tenure. So now we only have four very explanatory variables left, age, marriage, uh, hat, manager, and sale. Then we will run the regression again, data analysis, regression. So we will choose from B column to F column. And now this is our second uh, reduced model, and click OK. Set up the decimal places, click OK, and uh, now we will look at do we still have non-significant explanatory variable. So obviously we still have one that is marriage data. The p-value is 0 0.0990, so which means this variable still need to be deleted, marriage data. So now we will go back to our original data set go copy the data set from the model 2 and delete the marriage data so now we only have four explanatory variable left age had manager sales and hope all of them can be significant data analysis okay and choose the x range And so this is our third model, model 3, and click OK. 
and I keep four decimal places for my cell and one three four okay and uh, now we can look at our p-value for the explanatory variables and we found all of them are significant so this model so all this the, the regression model with these four explanatory, var explanatory variable would be the best model in this case. So the age, ha the, the status in the household, the occupation, management, occupation or not, or sale or not, uh, significantly affect the number of weeks a worker has been jobless. So this model, model 3, is our best model.